What is AI hallucination? A hallucination in both humans and AI refers to the perception or generation of information that does not correspond to reality or factual data. If I tell you that Alice went to Hawaii last week and she did in fact not go there, but I believe this to be true, my belief is false and I've just passed that on to you. This is similar to how an AI system tells you something that's not true, like Tom Hanks went to the moon in 1970. The reason why I thought that an AI told you something that wasn't true is where it gets interesting. Neither one of us was lying, we were mistaken. A lie is knowing the truth but telling you something else. A mistake is believing something to be true that's not. There are several ways we can be mistaken. Let's take a look at two reasons how humans and AI can make false statements and hallucinate. One, we had incorrect information. If Bob had flat out told me that Alice was in Hawaii last week, the mistake was made because I had bad information. Two, we made a reasoning error. In my case, Bob didn't give me incorrect information. I assumed it based upon available information. Why did I say Alice was in Hawaii last week? Because I just got off the phone with Bob and he told me Alice took a trip there for her birthday. Now I know Alice's birthday was last week, so I assumed Bob meant Alice was in Hawaii for her birthday last week, but in fact he meant her birthday a year ago. I took two pieces of information, the date of Alice's birthday and a statement about where Alice was last year and came to an incorrect conclusion. AI can make the same mistakes for the same reasons. Sometimes AI is trained on data that's incorrect. This could be because there's wrong information in the data set or more examples of a wrong answer than a correct one. If it never had the right answer to begin with, it's going to struggle with giving you the correct one when you ask for it. Another explanation is the AI made a reasoning mistake. This can be an incorrect contextual and semantic assumption, like Bob telling me Alice went to Hawaii on her birthday and I assuming the wrong conclusion from that context that we were talking about last week. It can also be a probabilistic assumption, where the AI reaches a conclusion based upon the proximity of different data. So what I mean by this is that the model understands the world through the relationship of different patterns to each other. Dogs and wolves are close to each other biologically, but dogs and cats are more close to each other in human social situations. If the AI sees the name Harry Potter and Hermione Granger together quite often, it might assume that the two of them got married. It's making an assumption based upon a proximity, but it's incorrect. If you ask a less sophisticated AI model, what year did Tom Hanks go to the moon? You can see this in action. It will often say 1970. This is a specific answer. It isn't random. This is evidence of a reasoning error. When the model learned a lot of facts about the world, including Tom Hanks' filmography and the fact that he starred in the movie Apollo 13, about the 1970 mission to the moon that almost ended in disaster. Probably nowhere in the data set was the statement, Tom Hanks never went to the moon. So when you ask it, what year did Tom Hanks go to the moon? Like many of the answers it gives you, it's not based upon something it memorized. It's trying to reason through the problem by taking three different pieces of information and putting them together. In this case, the fact that Tom Hanks was in the movie Apollo 13, it took place in 1970, and he played an astronaut. Of course, this is completely wrong. He never went to the moon, as far as we know. But the model really never had a lot of implicit training in telling you, hey, I don't actually know. How do we improve this? The same way you and I learn to avoid making these kinds of mistakes. As these models scale and spend more time training or thinking about a question, they learn to better understand what they know, what they don't know, and what information contradicts itself. If you ask GPT-4 about Harry Potter's wife or if Tom Hanks went to the moon, you'll get a more accurate answer than GPT-3. Not necessarily because OpenAI trained it not to say that, but because GPT-4 is better able to avoid these kinds of mistakes by being better at reasoning. We can test this with a new problem an AI probably never saw before. Which of these is Leonardo da Vinci's most famous painting? The Birth of Venus, Madonna, Child of Saints, The Garden of Earthly Delights, or The Tempest? Well, the answer is none of the above. It's a trick question. He didn't paint any of those, as far as we know. So let's go ahead and ask an AI model this. First, let's try Llama 3.21b. This is a very small model. It's a billion parameters. You could fit it on your phone with plenty of room left over. So we'll go over to Grok Cloud, which is great because it's super fast, and we'll add that question in there. And just like that, we get an answer. The correct answer is number one, the birth of Venus, which we know is not correct. 
why did it say that? Well, it's a small model, which means it's also what we call overfit. It's very familiar with its training data, but it's not so good at generalizing. So what happens if we try a more capable model? In this case, we'll go to Llama 70B. This is basically 70 times the size of the model we just tried. And we will go remove this, put the same question there, and ask again. And it writes back, the answer is none of the above. Leonardo da Vinci's most famous painting is the Mona Lisa. And then goes on to say, who painted the other paintings? That's incredibly sophisticated. It's way more capable than an other model. And that's one of the problems we often have in AI is we tend to think of just AI as a thing that's pretty static when there's a whole wide variety of AI capabilities and these systems keep improving all the time from GPT-3 to 3.5 to 4, and you have the different meta models and you have Anthropic, et cetera, things are getting better. What gets really interesting is that in some cases, you can simply tell a model that it might be dealing with a trick question or have incomplete information, and it will come up with the correct conclusion when it understands that's a possibility. You can use a prompt like, this may be a trick question. Let's go try GPT-40 Mini. This is a very capable model, but it's a pretty small model designed for speed and being very efficient. So it's really good in a lot of situations, not so much with trick questions. So we'll ask it, which of these is da Vinci's most famous paintings and give it wrong answers. And it says the correct answer is Madonna and Child with Saints, which we know is not right. So it fell for it, it fell for the trick question. But what if we tell it this may be a trick question? So let's ask GPT-40 Mini the question, but give it our little hint prompt that says, this may be a trick question. And it says, it's indeed a trick question. None of these paintings are by Da Vinci. What if we give it that prompt, but there's no trick question? Because maybe we wanna use that prompt if we train a new model to be good at spotting trick questions. If it's going to only work with trick questions, then it's not really a good prompt. Well, we can see that by giving it a very similar question, but this time putting in a painting by Da Vinci and seeing what it says. And it says only one of these paintings is by Da Vinci and it gets it right, the lady with an ermine, which shows you how clever this model actually is. It was able to get the right answer when it knew it was looking for a trick question. The reason that it didn't get it the first time is because it's trained to be very small and efficient and only deal with certain situations. In this case, probably not dealing with trick questions. But there's an even easier solution when you're dealing with models and unsure about hallucination. And that is to give it access to the information that you would use to try to find out the response. So we can go to GPT-4 Mini, give it the same question as we had before, which was the one with no correct answer, place it in here, and then I'm going to click search the web. This is gonna allow GPT-40 Mini, the small but very capable model, to do a web search to get some information and then decide the answer. Searches the web and it realizes none of these paintings were by Da Vinci. So I didn't need to give it a special prompt to tell it it's a trick question. It was able to look at the information it had in front of it and then decide. As we've seen, AI hallucination mirrors human cognitive errors. We make the same kinds of mistakes. They stem from incorrect data or faulty reasoning, but they improve as models become more sophisticated and we give them access to the same kinds of information you or I would use to find out if something's true or not.